so we shall start with section 3 of unit 5 and we'll talk about the various steps of establishing a safety and an effective environment by the management so first we'll have to review standards of operating procedures and check all the work areas for hazard issues and have equipments wherein the hotel or any organization can deal with it without any fallouts. The next point is that notifying all department heads about the nature and variety of hazards associated with their departments. We will also have to make a safety committee. So department heads for example the front office manager, the sales manager, the housekeeper, assistant housekeeper, uh, maybe the purchase manager. Uh, so for example five six people they are associated they are associated with the safety committee these are the core members of the safety committee and uh, so that becomes different for different hotels then we have a safety record that should be maintained properly so you know readings should be taken care and proper uh, workshops or proper methods proper trainings should be given on you know weekly or a monthly basis with every person in each department a periodic in-house inspection by the committee should be compulsory so with this uh, we will be able to understand how capable are we or how smart are we to deal with any tricky situation We'll also have to take care that proper training should be given to each and every staff related to safety procedures. We'll have to motivate the staff members to be staying conscious all throughout. Proper reporting should be done for accidents and injuries happening at the hotel with detailed analysis so that we can take a precaution before it can happen the next time. And we are properly equipped for the same practice safety management and monitoring follow-ups okay exactly what i said to you prior that uh, weekly or monthly sessions should be organized by the hr team or uh, department heads safety management programs should be reviewed time to time so that an effectiveness can be attained measured and necessary action can be taken in case of some flaws that may arise. So with this we finish section 3 of unit 5. We shall move on to the elements of safety and procedures and that is going to be the fourth section. Now this is section 9. Section 9 includes dealing with bomb threats. That's a very interesting and uh, important topic. Okay, This is usually maintained by the front office team. The operator has this sheet with him or her. So bomb threats may be delivered in a written or an oral form. In a person who is over the telephone. So thus it's with the telephone operator. If a threat is delivered via written medium, envelope should be handled carefully to preserve fingerprints and other evidences. Given that the document to the general manager and informing the police immediately. If the messenger left the premises, the employee who had received the note should be immediately prepared. Memorandum describing the complete event in details. How do we deal with it? In case it's an oral threat, the general manager and the police should be informed immediately. Threats should be issued and not kept, you know, hidden. The physical appearance of the person, if he is seen, the characteristics should be noticed. Like his height, eye color, the uh, uh, vo vocal tone, his uh, weight, his uh, dialect, all of this should be informed in case the person leaves the hotel then the transportation details should be 
looked upon and noted which can help in tracing the person in general bomb bomb threats are given over telephone these calls are usually of less duration so it's necessary to record all the informations accurately and correctly the housekeeping stuff if uh, the person is present should also be very useful when in terms of looking for an identified or an unclaimed object in the hotel premises so suppose if the bomb is in the hotel and uh, for example and a housekeeping uh, staff comes across the same if it's unidentified and uh, it's very questionable he or she should inform the team leaders and eventually it should, should reach the general manager now suppose there is a terrorism activity that takes place so for example the recent one was the terrorist attack at the taj mahal palace mumbai the oberoi trident mumbai and these hotels are globally known right we'll have to keep these risk reducing factors in mind limiting all installations of bin near the hotels which are placed should be checked and cleaned regularly bin sizes should be compromised the sizes should go down to very small clear bags with waste disposable should be used so that any unwanted thing can be identified easily wheeled beans and metal bins should be reviewed regularly now kindly note this down how to deal with terrorism keep public and communal areas clean and tidy minimal furnitures and discards to be used and avoided in place for hiding so we should try and keep everything clean lock unoccupied offices rooms also storage areas on and cupboards place temper proof seals on maintenance hatches every vehicle and employee should be checked thoroughly staff training is necessary and contingency plans should be made to deal with any emergency situation not just terrorism luggage of all guests should be checked properly and any type of parcels and mails should be screened by detectors staff and visitors pass system should be followed consider using robust physical barriers to keep all the unauthorized vehicles at a safe distance use of good quality windows doors glasses etc should be used very important thing is cctv camera should be installed and regularly monitored uninterrupted power supply should be available first aid facility should be kept ready at all the time installing and maintaining proper fire fighting system in the hotel proper security booklet should be handed over to the guest also briefed about with this section 9 we finish our chapter safety and security in hotels which is your unit 5 now let's just understand and conclude this so in uh, hotels in general let us understand what all safety me measures should be taken the first point would be that every floor should have at least two exits an emergency staircase should be connected to at least three four outlets in the hotel directional sign boards which is properly visible highlighted should be placed at each and every entry and exit points every guest room should have a visible emergency exit map and a plan behind the door okay that's very important also we should be uh, telling and informing it to the guest whenever we are giving them a room tour and these signs or maps should not be concealed with any decoration fire extinguishers should be placed at all convenient points and at a regular interval water sprinklers smoke detectors should be a part of the fire plan and design of every hotel metal detectors of baggage scanners at to be placed at the main entrance and uh, has we'll have to take you know care that any entry of a preventive item and an unauthorized material should be barred 
each and every guest room should have a peephole and an, uh, which is basically the eye hole so that we can hinder any inconvenient person or any inconvenient location every exit area should be open and led into an open area concierge and reception should be located at a strategic point a location from where the receptionist is able to view the movement of the main entrance for this reason reception is located between the main entrance and the guest elevators we shall talk about causes of accidents so basically this is occurred due to the following reasons suppose an object or an equipment is left in the corridors spillage on the floors poor floor maintenance procedures climbing on ladders carpet falls overreaching now in case we talk about a back sprain if a staff is uh, not trained well enough to in, uh, you know lift up heavy weights in a correct method so lifting pushing pulling of heavy loads is one of the main reason of back sprain for example if we get cuts and bumps from all the sharp equipments if we do not know how to handle them properly uh, this will result in cuts and bumps so how can we avoid it we should wear gloves at all times and know how to deal with harmful chemicals as well talking about burns and inhalations of uh, you know uh, very uh, unsafe gases and fumes so we should be careful enough of not touching hot liquids and uh, you know having adequate precaution not mixing chemicals without labels also including uh, safety measures falling objects you know proper signage should be there when there's a maintenance work if the floor is empty we can and if there's no sign how will be we be able to know right so we'll have to use proper sign proper uh, labels so that even if it's for a guest or even if it's for an employee from a distance we are able to understand uh, like suppose uh, there's a maintenance going on kindly stay away kindly walk slowly do not run so that is what we should supposed to do we'll talk about electric shocks this occurs when an electrical appliance are handled not carefully they are handled carelessly or for example they can be misused or an overloading should be stopped now how do we prevent a guest accident in case of a guest bathrooms and guest rooms are mostly accident prone area the following precautions can be used bath tubs to be cleaned properly also built up of scum should be carefully removed a rubber on an anti slip mat should be placed in the bath tub especially for elderly members if we see that there is an elderly member or babies or little children we should already pre place these in the guest room grab bars should be provided in every bath tub and shower cubicle tiles should be usually kept dry hair dryers uh, to be having a wall mount so that it doesn't sink into the water and prevent electric shocks windows should be locked to avoid falls wipe up all spillage broken glasses which is there on the floors warning signs wherein housekeeping or the maintenance is working prior information to each and every guest about the safety measures about uh, you know like i had already mentioned exit fire exit plans and uh, talking to them in case of emergency and calming them down everything has to be done in a very strict and proper manner so in case of an emergency or an accident we should try and evacuate the victim from the site as soon as possible we should call the hotel doctor in case the person needs first aid also not moving the victim who is suffering with a fracture can sometimes be identified as twisting of limbs or unnatural angles we should try 
very important we should try and keep calm and not take hasty decisions making a report of the accident in details and submit to the concerned department for example it's a uh, the security team now that we are talking that uh, details information must be passed on to the concerned head what are, are the details let us take a note it is the date and time of the accident or the incident who reported the accident room number of the guest suppose we have a particular sign a particular site a particular location so the site or location of the accident action taken first aid and doctor's treatment if the person is removed to the hospital names and statements of the witnesses if there is any also how the accident basically took place what is the major fault if we do have an idea with this we finish section 8 of unit 5 we shall move on to crime now that is your section 9 We shall move on to the sixth subsection and talk about fire prevention and its control. So we'll also have to understand the causes of fire. So carelessness is one of the major reasons behind the occurrence of fire or any, you know, faults. At any establishment like a misuse of electric, overloading, waste materials like newspaper, cloth, etc. near a fireplace can result to that. Using faulty equipments, dirt, grease in the kitchen can also be a cause. Poor cleanliness is fire's best friend. Here, the front office or housekeeping can play a major role as this is the only department which is completely responsible for upkeep of the hotel. Also, food production team plays a major role. If the kitchen is very unclean, if the kitchen is not properly maintained, it can result in catching fire. Fire Prevention Act 1971 should be covered by all hotels, okay, which are providing sleeping accommodation for more than six person guests or staffs included is less than six person, but where this accommodation is above the first floor and below the ground floor have to be covered by this act. This act makes provision for adequate means of escape and fire related precaution in places of public entertainment, recreation and instructions etc. We will also have to understand what are the key requirements before issuing a fire certificate. The means of escape. Okay. So what is basically the means of escape? It is the routes provided by the safety maintained unobstructed routes. Okay. Use of emergency lights, clear signal to exit, etc. are needed. Firefighting equipments, different types as required by the nature of activity in location. Means of giving warning of fire. Proper staff training. Fire detectors or smoke or heat detectors. Also, instruction to be provided in a guest room. Okay. Uh, when you go for your industrial training, keep a note that uh, when you are going in a room, at the back of the door of each room, you will get a fire exit plan that will show you the near exit, the near location wherein if there is an emergency, if there are if there is a fire which is caused at the hotel, there is a near exit and it is in every room. Now let us understand what an ev evacuation plan is. Now like I said an evacuation plan is provided in every room of the hotel. What is it? It is an emergency escape procedure and route assignment. Delegation of duty to those who will continue hotel operations in this situation and procedures to be followed for evacuation.
procedures to be followed after evacuation of all staff members from the fireplace. Delegation of first aid duties and rescue responsibilities to the staff who can perform it effectively. Correct way of passing the information to the guests regarding the situation. The preferred means of reporting fire and other emergencies. For any other information or explanation of duties, who to connect to or who to contact should be described in details. So in case of any emergencies, the front office has a public transferring instrument wherein they can wherein the front office personnel who is presently on the shift is trained enough with the proper instrument to inform all the guests and not create panic amongst them. So here the person has to be trained properly enough wherein he can control the situation and not create fuss amongst guests. There can be elderly people, there can be little children, right? So we'll have to train not only the front office but the hotel, each and every staff wherein they do not create panning amongst the employees, also the guests. Other point includes that a sufficient firefighting equipment should be kept at proper places. Smoke detectors, fire sprinklers, fire extinguisher should be properly maintained and taken a note on every uh, maybe a week end or a month end. Local area fire station should have periodical checkups. Each member should be trained properly about the location of exits, alarm, etc. placed throughout the hotels. And everyone should know how to use a fire extinguisher and which type to be used at a given point of time. Other points include that at the time of check-in, guests must be provided with the complete details of the hotel. Preventive fire measures. Also, should guests should be encouraged to read the fire evacuation guidelines posted behind the guest room doors. Right? So, when you are giving an introduction to the guest, when you are briefing the guest about a uh, uh, giving him a tour of the hotel, also placing his bags and taking him to the room, along with uh, talking to him about all the features in the room, we shall also, we should, in fact, also tell him about the fire evacuation map behind, placed behind the room door. So in brief, just remember, fire control, so fire stands for find, F stands for find, I stands for inform, R stands for restrict and E stands for extinguish. This can be remembered and used at the hotel to deal with fire. Fire needs oxygen and fuels to start. So if we understand this, we can control fire and can restrict and we can have proper measures. With this, we finish section 6. We shall move on to section 7. In section 7, we will talk about the mode of fire prevention. The different modes are water sprinkler. Now let us understand what is water sprinkler. These are used and situated on the ceiling of an automatically spray water when the temperature rises above a certain level. Okay, they are found in the corridors and also even in rooms. Then we have a smoke detector. Now when the smoke detector usually detects smoke, then only the water sprinklers get activated. Then there is manual alarm which is situated at various locations in the hotel. They are set off individually by the person discovering the fire. And it is also linked to a central indicator which shall show the location of the alarm ensuring quick action and it is also linked on the local fire station. Now that the fire is detected, the next would be modes, how to prevent it. First, we will have to have escape drills. Mock drills should be held periodically. 
Now in this drills, uh, the fire when a fire situation is created, a pre-planned procedure is followed and it will help all the people to control situation, also save life. Emergency lighting. An independent electric line should be given to a hotel which should be attached to all the exit signs so that in case of any emergencies these shine signs sorry should illuminate even if main line is off and helps in existing the hotel. Fire escape routes a safe means of escape will be required from each floor and every part of the building. This includes installation of fire escapes and fire resistant escape doors. Now all of this should only happen when our staff, all the employees are trained properly. A detailed procedure should be followed in case of fire. Use of fire extinguishers and their placement in the hotel building should be known to all. Also location of exit doors and escape routes must be thorough with every member of the hotel. Now let us go through the fire exit procedure for the staff. The first and the important thing is to activate the fire alarm. Informing a concerned department about the exact location and extent of fire and then they will come and inform the fire brigade. Vacating the building as soon as possible and reaching a safety place. Using fire exits and escape routes specifically that is to be maintained. Not using the elevators in case of uh, the person is at the elevator. It will automatically stop and unlock and no one else will be able to use it. Tackling the fire if no personal risk is involved. Also other things that has to be considered when all of this is happening is that the staff should remain calm. Who is dealing with a guest to manage the situation. Smoke is dangerous so we'll have to instruct all the guests to cover their face with a wet cloth and crawl towards the exit door and as the smoke tends to go higher the evacuation should be followed switching off all the exhaust fans in case of it's in the kitchen the fire is started from the kitchen also not doing Unnecessary things such as jumping out of the windows from a higher floor and breaking the windows uh, that will in case uh, you know increase the fire and uh, because uh, oxygen fresh oxygen can come in the fire will go higher. So these are unnecessary steps and these should be avoided. The number of guests and employees should be counted so that nobody is missing. Post fire, it is very important to check on each and every room if anybody is trapped or in case of uh, a loss of somebody's personal belongings, which is very, uh, you know, important. Now, let us briefly understand the types of uh, fire extinguisher. This is not uh, very much important. If you want, you can just keep a note of this and go through. Uh, you can also take down this diagram down. Now fire can be of three types. Okay, class A, class B and class C. Class A fire involves ordinary combustible material. Example wood, paper, cloth etc. And can be extinguished with water or soda acid type of extinguisher. Class B would have inflammable liquids, grease and chemicals and they can be controlled only by blanketing with a source of foam, carbon dioxide or dry powder or dry type of extinguisher. Class C or Class E fire are related to electrical short circuits etc. and a non-conductive extinguishing agent is required. To deal with this, carbon dioxide or dry powder can be used. With this, we finish fire as a part of section 7. We shall start with section 8 of unit 5. 
we'll talk about accidents and its prevention now accidents can occur anytime anywhere exactly why it is called an accident right it can happen anytime at the hotel to a guest or staff and it is very important to take proper precautions so that we can avoid these accidents from happening in a hotel front office and housekeeping department are mainly responsible for dealing with these situation the hotel's employee should have a thorough knowledge of first aid procedures usually nowadays every hotel have their own resident doctors an ambulance should be available when an it is required accidents can be prevented if enough attention is given to their prevention planning and the prevention depends on employee training and hazard reporting these are the two main parts